Hey everyone, in this video we're comparing two of the top tier ASUS gaming ultra portables available right now in the 15 inch segment, the ROG Zephyrus M15 and the S15. Sure, the S15 is the higher tier product with a few extra features and more powerful hardware specs, so if you're shopping for an RTX 2080 super configuration, that's only going to be available in the S15. However, if you'd rather not spend $3000 on a laptop and look at an RTX 2070 super configuration instead, that's available on both the S15 and the M15, in different versions, but at a fairly similar price, and that's where this comparison makes the most sense. We'll talk about the specs and the performance in a bit, but first, let's touch on the other aspects that set these two apart. Oh, and before we start, please take a second to hit that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm, this helps us a lot. Both these laptops are compact and lightweight 15 inch devices with similar build and design lines. Magnesium alloys are used for their main body and the S15 also gets a magnesium bottom and is only available with a brushed aluminum lid cover. The M15 on the other hand gets a plastic bottom and the choice for a similar aluminum lid on the brushed black variant or a newer plastic lid on the prism black and prism grey variants with these dots that light up differently based on the light around them. I prefer this newer design with the redesigned ROG branding and the screen also feels slightly stronger on this variant. However, as you'll notice here, the S15 sits flush on the desk when closed and the back part lifts up when opening the lid. That's what ASUS calls the AAS cooling system which raises the laptop's back in order to improve airflow underneath and implements a piece of metal that isolates the fans and the hot running components from the user, allowing the bottom to feel slightly cooler when running games. That's noticeable in the thermal readings, but don't forget that this is more or less an illusion, as the hot parts are hidden behind the AAS flap, and in reality, the interior and components actually run marginally hotter on the S15, that's especially the case with the storage drives. The open plastic bag design of the M15 includes air grills over the storage units, which allow for better venting, but there are none of those on the S15, and as a result, the SSDs run at 10 to 15 degrees Celsius hotter on this notebook. The S15 is also a tad more difficult to open up, as you have to remove the AS flap first before you can take out the entire bottom panel. ASUS also uses several screw sizes on both of these laptops, so if you plan to open them up, make sure to note where each comes from so you can put them back in the right place. Finally, this sort of design also makes the S15 unusable with the lid closed when hooked up to an external monitor, while the M15 works well in this way or placed in a vertical stand. This aside, the two are similar in terms of functionality and ergonomics, with grippy rubber feet on the bottom, blunted interior edges, solid screen hinges and the I.O. line on the sides. Both include most of the required ports, with Thunderbolt 3 support as a novelty for the 2020 generation, but both still lack a card reader, an integrated camera or any sort of biometrics. There's one more specific particularity of the S15 that I have to mention here, the integrated RGB lights within the AS system. They're fairly subtle and some might appreciate them, however ASUS does not offer individual control over these lights. Instead, they are tied to the keyboard's illumination, which means that they light up accordingly to the keyboard setting and the only way to dim or switch them off is to dim or switch off the keyboard's lighting. Speaking of that, the two laptops implement what might look like identical keyboards and they are in terms of layout, but not in terms of feedback and lighting. The S15 offers fairly stiff keys that require a firm press to actuate properly, with quirky RGB control, but the F1 to F12 writing on the top row of keys is not backlit, and finding the right one in the dark is a guessing game. The M15 is available with this exact same keyboard on the brush black design option, or with a different keyboard on the newer Prism variant. This newer version is a faster and shallower typer, and something I found more to my liking, but it only includes single zone RGB lighting, and plenty of light creeps from under the keycaps, shining into the screen's chin. The F1 to F12 writing, however, is lit on this implementation. For mouse, both get a rather small glass click pad with precision drivers, sturdy construction and decent clicks. It's okay, not great. As far as screen options go, the Zephyrus S15 is obviously targeted towards gamers, with a Full HD 300Hz panel as the single available option in most regions. It's a fine panel for daily use and excellent for gaming, with fast response times, roughly 300 nits of brightness and 100% sRGB color coverage. ASUS also implements a G-Sync mode on this laptop. A software toggle available in Armory Create allows to choose between Hybrid with Optimus or Discrete with G-Sync modes with a restart in between. This is not an option on the M15 models, which lack the required hardware switch and only offer an Optimus mode. However, the M15 is a potentially more versatile product available with either Full HD 140Hz or 240Hz screens for gamers 
for a 4K UHD screen with 100% Adobe RGB color coverage for creators and professionals that require a color accurate display. Stay away from the 140Hz screen option, that's probably the washed out variant also available on the base level Zephyrus G15. Instead, if you're into gaming, go for the 240Hz 3ms panel option, it's nearly identical to the 300Hz option on the S15 in terms of brightness, colors and specs. The UHD screen is more color accurate, sharper and brighter at 400 plus nits, but also a more expensive option that will take a toll on the battery life. Both these laptops get the same 76Wh battery, pretty much the smallest in their niche, so don't expect more than 3-5 hours of daily use and 6-8 hours of video on Optimux. They both ship with 240W power bricks in the higher tier configurations, required to power the components, but also support USB-C charging. Both also get the same audio systems with middling quality button firing speakers, but excellent headphone audio with the help of the integrated Sabre Hi-Fi deck. And you'll most likely want to use headphones on these laptops to cover up their fan noise when playing games. Ok, with all this out of the way, let's talk specs and performance. Both these lineups are based on 10th gen Intel Comet Lake hardware with up to DDR4 3200 MHz memory and dual storage with RAID support as well as Nvidia graphics. While Asus mentions 6 core and 8 core CPU options for both the M15 and the S15, right now the S15 is available with an 8 core i7 10875H processor while the M15 only ships with a 6-core i7-10750H CPU. Furthermore, the S15 is available with a full-power RTX 2070 Super 150W Max P GPU on the lower tier model and an RTX 2080 Super Max Q chip on the top tier configuration, while the M15 tops at a 2070 Super Max Q graphics chip. Thus, the S15 offers faster CPU and GPU options, but let's see how this translates in benchmarks, real-life workloads and games. We've reviewed the RTX 2080 Super Max Q version of the S15 and the RTX 2070 Super Max Q version of the M15, and we've also included our results from our reviews of the RTX 2070 Max P in the 2019 Zephyrus S, as well as the RTX 2070 Super Max P in the 2020 ASUS ROG SCAR 15 for comparison. We ran a couple of different tests on our review units from the standard synthetic benchmarks such as Cinebench or Geekbench to Blender, SpecView Per for Handbrake, which simulate real-life work with professional applications and video encoding. We've also ran the combined 3 Mark tests and gather all our results in these charts. The 8-core 2020 Zephyrus S15 scores 20-30% higher in CPU multi-threaded loads compared to the 6-core models from both 2019 and 2020. At the same time, the i7-10750H is roughly a 2-5% upgrade from the i7-9750H in the previous generation Zephyrus models, and both of the 10 gen platforms improve around 10% on single core performance. GPU scores have also been slightly improved on the Super chips. The 2070 Super Max Q outmatches the 2019 Full Power 2070 and performs within 8 to 12% of the 2080 Super Max Q implementation. That's because both the 2070 and the 2080 Super Max Q GPUs in these laptops are overclocked and allowed to run at up to 105 watt in some tests and games on the Turbo profiles. Benchmarks aside, all these notebooks provide consistent performance in longer duration loads but with high CPU power setting. The 8 core on the S15 stabilizes a 70 plus watt of power in our multi loop Cinebench test, with the 6 core on the M15 stabilizing at 63 plus watt in order to reach those results. Even so, both CPUs run within 10 to 10% of their maximum turbo potential. They would require 100 plus watt of sustained power to reach that potential, which is just not possible within this form factor. Undervolting helps somewhat, especially on the 8-core S15 implementation, and while that's locked in Windows with apps such as XDU or Throttle Stop, there is an undervolting option included in BIOS. Now, as far as gaming goes on these laptops, we ran a couple of titles and gather our findings here. Take a moment to go through them. As mentioned earlier, the S15 comes at the top of the ladder here, thanks to the overclocked RTX 2080 Super implementation running at up to 105 watt and undervolting the CPU helps squeeze a few more frame rates here and there, as the cooler CPU allows for extra headroom for the GPU. However, the RTX 2070 Super configuration in the M15 ends up within 10% of the S15 model, at a fraction of the cost. As for the full power RTX 2070 Super in the ROG SCAR, that performs somewhere in between the 2070 and 2080 Super Max Q implementations in the Zephyrus models, so you should expect about the same from the RTX 2070 Max-P variant of the S15. Now, as far as thermals and noise go, both the S15 and the M15 run fairly hot and noisy with games. 
the fans ramp up to about 50 to 52 dB at head level on the turbo modes, and the CPU averages low to high 80s in most titles, with the GPU averaging low 80s to high 70s on both notebooks. Both laptops also offer quieter and lower performance profiles. Switching over to performance in Armory Create tames down the fans to about 44 to 46 dB, removing the GPU overclock and limiting it at 80 w in both cases, while gaming on silent quiets down the fans to below 40 dB, but further limits the CPU and GPU performance. As for the chassis temperatures, both laptops hit interior temperatures in the mid-50s around the heat pipes, with a slight advantage for the M15, but the lower half and the WSD and arrow keys stay within comfortable high 30s to low 40s. The bottom stays cooler on the S15, with the components hidden beneath the AS system, but the M15 only hits high temperatures in a small area around the heat pipes, and its open design better ventilates the SSD. Gaming aside, both fans remain active all the time on both these laptops, even with light use, but they spin quietly and are pretty much inaudible in most conditions, unless you keep the laptop on turbo while plugged in. In conclusion, the Zephyrus S15 is the more powerful notebook here, with a roughly 10-15% advantage in games and 20-25% advantage in multi-threaded loads. It also offers a 300Hz screen and G-Sync mode that gamers might appreciate. However, the RTX 2080 variant is listed at $3000 right now, which is on par with similarly spec competitors, but a hefty amount of money to pay for a notebook. The RTX 2070 Max-P version of the S15 starts at $2399. This loses most of the gaming advantage and is only available with up to 16GB of RAM in dual channel as it gets 8GB of solder RAM, while the RTX 2080 model gets 16GB of solder RAM and 32GB installed out of the box. I'd also expect this to run slightly hotter and noisier with games, as the thermal module needs to cool off 150W of power and not up to 105W as on the 2080 variant. And here enters the RTX 2070 Super version of the M15 which will most likely get the 240Hz screen and 6-core i7 CPU option, but 32GB of RAM in dual channel. It's not yet available in stores and I can't comment on its pricing, but if competitive, and by that I mean cheaper than the S15, this could be a well-balanced alternative for the base S15. Sure, there's no G-Sync and it won't perform the same in demanding CPU loads, but it will do just fine in combined loads and games, while most likely running quieter and cooler than the matching RTX 2070 S15 version, and it's also a cleaner and more modern design. With that in mind, we're going to wrap up this video here. I'd love to hear your thoughts on these products though, so get in touch in the comment section with your feedback and questions, and of course, make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to our channel to get notified when we publish more clips. Catch you later.